Good afternoon, it's Dr. Gary. Dr. Gary on the road. We are dental practice brokers. Uh, we handle the transaction between the sale of the doctors selling a dental office and the buyer purchasing it. The name of our company is Healthcare Practice Sales and our um, website is dentalpracticeguide.com. Dentalpracticeguide.com. Our number is 201-663-0935. And I was a dentist for 25 years and now we've been doing the dental practice brokerage. I have eight employees for the last 11 years and we enjoy what we do every day. We make a new friend each time. So today's issue is this, and I hear this all the time. The seller has a very nice office. It was tastefully done. They spent, I think they bought it from somebody else uh, they say just recently did some improvements into it, put some money into it, grossing about four ninety somewhere around there. PPO fee for service, good quality equipment, high visibility, retail. Although they're on the upper floor of a retail center, they weren't on the ground level. And um, I said, uh, an all digital, all computer. I'd say it's pretty much walking condition and very nice furnishings good equipment so pretty solid so I asked well what do you think it's worth just before we even get started here I think there was five operatories also 2,000 square feet rent was a little high for the area so I would say the rent was about uh, maybe it could be like 17 18 percent of the gross so rent was high um, so that's an issue and they say, and they hear this all the time, we want full gross, 500,000 for our practice, they're grossing 490. I said, well, that's over 100%. It's a little more challenging to get that. Uh, that's not today's market. The buyer won't pay it. The bank won't finance it. And it probably will not cash flow. That is getting adequate money for the doctor to pay off the loan, and at the same time, make a little bit of a living out of it. And they justify it by saying, well, if you were to build this practice, it would cost so much money. And I said, yes, but they may not build the practice in this location. They may want, even though you have high visibility in a shopping center, you're on the second floor. They may, be wanted, may want to be in a different location. Secondly, all, even though your equipment is very nice, up to date, they may want different colors, different equipment. Just because you like it doesn't mean that they will like it. Um, so you can't justify it. A buyer is going to choose exactly what he wants, where he wants it. Obviously, he'll have no patience, but he has his choice where to where to uh, put his practice. So he just keeps insisting on five hundred thousand dollars, and I told him I can't sell it for that. Bank won't finance it. Accountants will approve it. Doesn't cash flow. I can't get you the money you want. However. He says, well, I've targeted, I want 500,000. I said, listen, what we can do is let's not even put it on the market. Let's have you in a year to two years, increase the growth to $650,000. And then we can begin getting closer to your 500. It's the only solution that I see. You can make a little profit while you're getting there, but I won't be able to do that. He then responds, well, I hear all kinds of numbers over the gross the corporations are paying. I said the corporations are buying things over a million dollars. Hopefully, 1.5 million and above is their target. They want at least five operatories. They want multiple operatories, at least five. Uh, and they want the seller to stay on for two years, at least. They want associates on location. And you're not getting 100% of your money at closing. You're going to hold maybe... 10, 15, 20% of it back. And you've got to keep the trout, the practice at at least an even number from what you when they purchase it and not dip down. If it dips down, they'll take money. So yes, you may get over 100% if you're a candidate that they want to buy. But they're not buying $500,000 practices. Occasionally, they'll do something which is called the roll-up or better yet, a record sale. But still, it's not that often. You're not going to get uh, that kind of money for a record sale. So this is a message I tried to get across. We had another one in the same area. He wanted $200,000 over the gross. 
and his practice is only grossing about 275. We said we can't get 475,000 for your practice. It'll be wasting your valuable time and the buyers are not gonna purchase it. Um, most buyers nowadays will look at your records before they come. And if it doesn't really cash flow and they don't like the way the numbers are looking, they won't even come out to see it. So it's the type of thing you don't wanna waste your valuable time. And I won't be able to sell it, so I really don't want to go uh, and try to sell it at all. Just tell them I can't do it. However, once again, if you want those kind of monies, wait until you can increase the gross and uh, set a target number that you want for a practice purchase. And then, you know, grow the practice another hundred some odd thousand so that um, you can reach that number and it's affordable to the buyer. And, affordable, and it makes sense for the seller. That's kind of the way you handle these things. You're not getting 100%. It's not happening unless private equity is buying it and they want over 1.5, and they're looking for stuff over 1.5 million, multi uh, operatory with associates are gonna stay in place. They're gonna hold back money. So you just hear these rumors that you think you have all the answers when it comes to that, but yeah, you've got to understand what the marketplace is. A marketplace is what the buyers was wishing to pay, what the sellers wishing to let it go for, what the bank's going to finance. That's your mark, true, true market value. So in essence, you don't know the value of a practice until you've sold it, because really it's what somebody's willing to pay. Some practices sit for a period of time; they just do not move. Um, so, signing off for now. We hope to have more information for you in the future. Thank you.